Welcome to this CNC online program about Falco. We'll see together today how to extend Falco, Falco with plugins and trigger some highlights from almost any kind of or any kind of stream of events you may have. So let me show you my face. Yeah. So first, uh, who I am? I'm Thomas Dachas. I'm a French engineer. I'm currently working for at CSD as an open source and ecosystem advocate. Before that, I was SRE for more than eight years, especially for two players, media, press, online businesses, and uh, my last job was SRE for online bank in France. I'm contributor to Falco, uh, not, I'm not developer of Falco because I don't know C++, but uh, I write uh, blog posts, I do talks, I try to help people on the Slack channel. And I'm also the creator of Falco Psychic, a demon to connect Falco with your ecosystem. So a little reminder, what is Falco? Falco currently is a CNCF incubation level project. Basically, it, it's a, a cloud native runtime security project. It means it's de facto right now the Kubernetes threat detection engine you can install in your clusters to detect threats and bad behaviors that may happen. If you want to know more about Falco, what it is, how, to, how it works, what we can do with it, you can watch this uh, CNCF online program um, made by Lovis De Giovanni, CTO and founder of CISDIC. CISDIC uh, is a company which created Falco at the beginning. So now, it's still an incubation level project, but with plugins I will present you in this presentation, we can find Falco more than a, more than a Kubernetes oriented threat detection engine. It's now a global threat detection engine because you can, with any source of event, trigger alerts. It means you can detect bad behaviors, strange patterns uh, in your cloud infrastructure, uh, in your local host or any three more events you can have. And for some statistics, Falco currently uh, has reached uh, almost 5,000 stores on GitHub. It's an uh, increase of 30% in a year. And we have more than 45 billion of pools uh, from Docker Hub. So the growth is quite impressive this year. Thank you. So a little reminder about the architectures of Falco. At the lowest level, we have what we call the drivers. They run at the kernel in the kernel users in, uh, in the kernel space. The, the drivers are either kernel module or eBPF props. I will not describe them much more, but they are responsible to collect syscalls. Above the drivers, we have libscap and libsint. How to tell libsint? Uh, Libscap is, is dedicated to the collection of this call from the drivers and Libsins will pass them and extract fields. And above that, for the matching of rules, we have, we have a rule engine and output. Falco will be able to send the alerts, the events to a program, standard out, uh, HTTP endpoint. And this is how it works with Falco Psychic, for example. We also have gRPC now. So, Libscap uh, is Libscap, aka library for system capture. It runs in the user space library. It's a user space library. Uh, the, the drivers are in the kernel space, but the, the libraries are in user space. They communicate with the drivers, then they read the syscall from the rig buffer. This is where the drivers put. Uh, the, the, the events, and then after they forward them to libsims. So lib, libsims, like a aka library for system inspection. It's also a user space library. It receives receives events from libscap, and it enriches the have this all these events with matching state. This is where we can add some details about like my metadata from. Kubernetes, from Docker, Focus Docker, Daemon, Contergy, etc. 
and it is also able to perform some filtering. If we take a look at the evolution of Falco from the beginning to now, at its creation, it was only for monitoring um, syscall events at the kernel level. So we have the drivers, SCAP, SPIN, and RUNG. A few months or years after, we added the ability to receive, to receive uh, Kubernetes audit logs from the control pane. The idea is to create to run inside Falco a web server, and this web, well, this web server is an endpoint for the control pane to send out um, to uh, send out to audit clubs. So Falco is it was able to collect syscall and uh, audit logs even. So we have two sources of events right now. It's also able to collect details about um, pods, name, etc., etc. We have some drawbacks with these implementations. The API at Falco level was not really clear. It was, it was hard, hard to instance. And it means Falco needs to expose, much to expose a web server. Uh, so we may have some flows, uh, some uh, uh, it's, uh, bad pattern, to, uh, expose, less secure pattern than just uh, closed daemon. To work with the control plane, we have to just reduce the volume. Yeah. We have to manage the TLS certificates between control plane and Falco. It can be a little bit complicated. And uh, the big big challenge with this implementation is uh, it can't it can't work uh, with uh, managed communities cluster GKE, uh, AKS, EKS for. Uh, why? Because uh, when you are running a managed cluster, you don't have access to audit logs directly. They are, they are um, gathered and stored in the log system of your cloud provider. So we have to find out a way to get them back, insert them into FACO. Some people in the community, thanks to them, created uh, kind of demons to collect from the log system audit logs and re-inject them into Falco, but it's not really convenient. So this is why in the last release of Falco from January 2022, we released the API for plugins. It means we can add any kind of plugins we need to Falco. Falco is now extensible with any kind of input. So we have a standard API with clear, clear definition, and we can expose easily resources from cloud providers, GCP, Azure, and Azure for us. We'll describe everything. So basically, plugins are dynamic shared libraries, which allow, 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 allow Falco to collect and extract fields from streams of events. So. We can basically have events like CloudTrain from Amazon, CloudWatch logs from Amazon, uh, Azure logs analytics, cloud logging from, G from GCP, directly events from Kubernetes cluster. We can also think about events at the containerd or Docker daemon. And if we want something which is out, in fact, out of the world of infrastructure of uh, running web applications, we can think about one of the biggest stream of events in the world, Twitter. So we can, I will show you, uh, I will show you a demo, uh, but a demo plug, a Twitter plugin for Falco. More technical details about plugins. As plugins um, are, are working uh, as dynamic libraries, they can be .so or .dll, .iso for uh, Unix and .dll for Windows. It means we can technically run Falco with plugins on in a new, on the Windows uh, environment. Just to be clear, right now Falco is not able to collect syscalls uh, at the uh, you know, from the Windows kernel. It only runs it only runs on Unix uh, un Linux systems. But technically, with plug we can we could run them for plugins on Windows. I don't know if it works, I never tried myself. 
The uh, API framework at the Falcon level is quite simple. We don't have a lot of function with method and system, we call that C-symbols. Uh, you have to know all of them are not mandatory to create a plugin, only a few subset of them, but they are there and the documentation, the developer guide is uh, full and you have every detail about all, met all methods and, and, and so. Technically, we can create a libraries.iso from any language, um, basically. Uh, right now, we only have two implementations in C++ and in Go, and we'll see in the next slide why we choose to offer an SDK for Go, for example. Uh, it's only available from Falco.31 from January to 2022. We have two flavors for plugins. First ones are source, what we call source plugins. They run with uh, libscap. They are responsible to open and close event sources. They generate a batch of events and then, and then send them back to Falco. They must have a, a unique ID. We'll explain that after. And they can also directly extract data from the events. They can extract um, data to fill fields, for example. And we also have extractors plugins. They are more running at the lib seems level. They are responsible to extract events. For example, the, the main uh, extractor plugin we, we have currently is JSON plugin. From any kind, from any plugin, source plugin, which collects JSON events, we can use after the JSON extractor plugin to get the values of it. It can be generic or uh, tied to a specific data source. It depends what you want. For example, JSON is, is quite generic, but we can we are creating an extractor plugin for audit logs, Kubernetes audit logs, because whatever the source is, GCP, uh, Azure, AML, the format of the JSON is always the same. So if we take a look at the sequence diagram for the source plugin, the libscap library, so in Falco, open, ask the source plugin to open, and it retrieves uh, batches of events with a high level of iterations. Uh, it's really performant. And after when the, all the events have been collected, uh, it can close it if we want. And for the uh, extractor plugins, this is quite the same idea, except the library list, lib, since, uh, library will um, call the get fields method from plugins to get the list of all fields which are available for, for the plugin. And then after we the extract fields, it will loop to get um, to extract uh, uh, fields. How to enable a plugin in Falco? It's quite easy. Uh, you may you may already familiar with the falco.yaml uh, configuration file, which is the main configuration file for Falco. So now we have a plugins section and load plugins list. So load plugins is just the list of plugins we want to enable. So in, in this uh, example, we just have one plugin. So we have the name. Important, this is the exact name you will see in the uh, plugin uh, configuration. I will see, show you after. Library path is where the plugin is stored on your system. It can be relative, it, it, it can be uh, relative or absolute, I like you want. And you have the init config. This is where you will set all parameters to run your plugin. So either in YAML, either in JSON, it works. This is why I'm, I'm showing you both methods. You have to know one important thing. When you enable, when you load a plugin in Falco, it currently, this is just a current drawback, technical drawbacks, a current, current technical drawback. You can't, uh, you, you disable automatically this call collection. So you can run an else, a Falco instance for both this call collection and plugin. It will change in future, of course, but right now, is the situation. So, technical caveats. Uh, 
for, for developers, you have to know the, the, the flows are simplified compared to these calls. Right? For, for end users, it's not, not really useful. It's just for people who want to write plugins or develop Falco. You have to know that. The memory allocations must be owned and managed by plugins. This is why it's useful for to use Go, for example, because we have a, a garbage collector. But if we think about Rust, and it's a powerful manner manu manu to manage uh, memory, it, seems, it could be nice to have plugins in Rust too. You can load only one plugin, one source plugin, at uh, uh, for, by, by instances of Falco. It disables uh, this code collection. And you have to take care to not overlap uh, IDs uh, when you create a plugin. Why? This is because the source plugins may be used by Falco and Sysdig uh, uh, open source. And you can create capture, you can record captures with Sysdigs. And the, the plugins we have, we, which has created the events inside the capture are their ID, its ID, its, uh, its uh, number. So, and this is this number. So, we, if we want to create, if we want, if we don't want to create conflicts between captures and plugins, we must have, uh, we must, we must not have uh, overlaps. And you also have to take care of the uh, extractions of fields to not, uh, not have uh, same fields for different plugins. It's not a big deal, but you have to know. And, but a big, big challenge right now is the M official Falco M chart to install and manage Falco is not yet ready for plugins. Why? Because we have a big challenge currently how to manage different flavors, kinds of instances for Falco. Let me explain. Right now, for most of the plugins, you just have to run one Falco with the plugin, and that's all. Uh, if we take the example of CloudWatch logs, if you run several instances of Falco with each instance uh, you, CloudWatch logs plugins enabled, you will collect the same event several times, and you will be you will, you will have a duplication of alerts. And a contrary, if we run some, uh, if, we, if, we, if we want to run Falco with the second agent uh, plugins, these plugins, uh, these, uh, these plugins must, must run at the host level. So we have, we need one, uh, one Falco per node in your cluster. So in one case, we, we just need one Falco. In another, we need a Falco on each node, like a demon set, for example. So we have to deal with that. So to enhance the um, uh, the user experience for people who want to who want to write plugins, we created a, an SDK in Golang. Why? Because Go is quite easy to write. It's a popular language in cloud native and open um, in cloud native and open source community, communities. And also a Golang developer, so I can't uh, tell the opposite. It's quite quite easy to deal with the interface. Interface of, um, it's quite easy to interface Golang with C. Uh, remember, uh, Falco is written in C++ because we have uh, C Go and other stuff. We can manage. Uh, we can't manage directly the memory, but we have the garbage collector. So to allow a good interface between C, uh, which has his manner to manage memory, and Go, which has another manner to uh, manage its memory, it's quite nice to have a kind of framework in SDK to uh, not make people aware of that and let make them only focus on their logic and not on the low-level uh, questions. Uh, so we created an SDK in Go. Uh, it's quite easy to use. Let me show you. So first we have the falco.yaml file. 
to enable uh, a plugin. Just a second. It will be loaded in Falco. Falco will use it to know what he has to do and use the plugin in the format of a .iso we created. So in this example, it's a, it's a dummy example. I don't, we, have, we need to import the SDK. We need to create some structures, etc., etc., to and build it with the same uh, version of uh, uh, of a plugin in the, uh, in the same context than Falco to, to run. So for each plugin in Golang with the SDK, we have the imports. So we need to import all details from the SDK, uh, all base structure we need. Let me show you there. there. We have to create two structures, one for the plugin itself with its configuration, another, and we have to import plugins.bat plugin. It will automatically uh, add all mandatory fields into your structure. Then for the instance, what we call it an instance is an open stream. For example, when you create a client to Twitter stream API, this is an instance. You have the plugin with, uh, which is created by Falco with the details you you put in your in your Falco.yaml and at the moment it it opens a stream. This is an instance. So the first to do with your plugin is to register it in, uh, to Falco. It's done by the sorry, init function. You have to ex to register the source. And the extractor, if you have one, if you, your plugin is also an extractor. Then we have the init with a capital case for the I, uh, uh, which is responsible to uh, map the configuration between your falco.yaml and your structure. You can, this is where you can set some uh, default values here. And then we have the info. Uh, method really important because this is where you put the ID of your plugin, the name, and remember the name is what you have to set in your falco.yaml file, and you also have the event source. This one is also really important because, uh, for example, if we want to uh, create rules for Kubernetes audit logs. We may, we may have GCP, uh, Azure, Amazon, or directly the control plane as sources for, for these events. So we may have three, four, five, whatever, uh, different plugins, each with its own, with the, each uh, with its own name, but they will have at the end the same format for the events. So we will use the same event source. And the event source is what we use in the, in the rules files to enable the rules for the plugin. I will show you after. So we have the open stream uh, method. This is where you connect to the, to the uh, external API or, or you connect to, I don't know, Kafka, RabbitMQ, whatever. This is where you create the instance. And we have fields and extract fields in the, uh, uh, if you remember uh, when uh, I show the uh, uh, extractor sequence play, uh, diagram, this is where the Falco is able to get the list of all fields available for your plugin. And these fields will be available in your rules, of course. And extract is when your plugin is also an extractor, it's where you, you're able to map a fields a key with a fields value. And next batch is the last method used by Fal Falco uh, uh, plugin framework to collect event in batches. Just have to know this this is supposed to write with a writer each value. Uh, you have um, 
the max size for your batches and the number of events your batch contains has to be returned by the by the method. So to uh, to offer a way uh, to the community to propose their own plugins and let the rest of the world know they have contributed and they have already uh, write uh, uh, they have already wrote a plugin with, for some source. We also have a registry. It contains metadata and information about every uh, non plugin. This is uh, when you have written a plugin, you can propose it with a different ID than others, of course, uh, in this in the, to this registry. You, this is where you, check, you, you can check which IDs are available to, to uh, avoid conflicts. And it's also right now where we store the plugins managed uh, and written by the Falco maintenance. Uh, for example, we have a CloudTrail, JSON, uh, and Dummy. A Dummy is just an example in C++ and Go to, to offer you a way to, to uh, dig and understand how it works. In future, we'll also create shared libraries, uh, for example, for authentications to cloud providers, to uh, get logs from uh, CloudWatch logs, for example, because we always use the same manner. So what we want is when you want to create a plugin for a new service for GCP, Azure, and Amazon, you will just have we just have to import the those shared libraries, those shared modules, and the authentication and the creation of clients will be already there. You just have to get focused on which page you want to extract, uh, the which uh, um, configurations you need, etc. It just makes you focus on the, on the, your logic and not on the uh, old stuff around. So in the registry uh, readme, you will find out this list, for example. So you have the ID, the name, name used in your falco.yaml to enable the plugin, the name of the event source. This is why, for example, we have uh, k8s underscore audit. In the future, we have the same with underscore eks, underscore eks, underscore gke, etc. And the event source will be always the same. And we will find out which uh, the names of authors, etc. For example, the compagent is the first modules created by someone uh, from someone else uh, of the community. Thank you, Ivan. And you have the source plugin and the extractor plugin. So an example of plugins we, we propose the, the, with the ID number two, it's the AWS Cloud Trail plugin. So it extends Falco to your cloud infrastructure by collecting events from Cloud Trail. For Cloud Trail, you have to know we have three sources of the events. We can collect them from S3, from an SQS queue, or directly from a local file system in JSON format. Of course, this plugin is also an extractor, so we have new fields, city.name, city.user, city.info. All details are in the readme, you can find out with the link here. And we have a new event source for your roles called AWS underscore CloudTrail. So with this new plugin, we can, we can create this kind of, uh, of role. For example, this one will detect any login to your Maven console by a user without MFA. So as you can see, we have the source, AWS underscore CloudTrail, and we have the new field, city.name, city.error, etc. And we also use for this one, the JSON extractor we mentioned uh, earlier in the slide. So it's really powerful because you can now detect uh, events in uh, happening, uh, which may happen in your cluster, but also at the infrastructure level and uh, with this kind of plugin. So for the JSON plugin, we, like I just showed you, we have some new fields, uh, 
which works with any events in JSON format. Uh, what is useful with these plugins is you don't need any configuration. It, out of the, it works out of the box. You just have to enable it. For the JSON plugin and the Cloudflare plugins, are they are managed and created by Falco maintainers. They are already embedded in, in the Falco images. Docker, Falco Docker image. So a demo. In this one, we'll see. Let me remove that. So in this one, I will show you the Docker uh, Docker plugin. So I'm running Falco with the uh, Docker plugin loaded. So it will connect to the container D daemon and extract all fields in a right time. And I just created a dummy rules to print out any actions which are of a type container where we have the source, Docker, etc. So let's create a container. First one. And we see the basic workflow of the uh, container creation. Create, attach, start. We have the image and the name of the container. It's exactly what I used to run my command first. And if I exact something inside, we also detect the exact of command inside my container. Uh, container sorry. So we have the wall command, the image, and the, the name of the container. So it works, basically. This plugin is just to oh, sorry, is just to um, demonstrate how it works. It's quite easy, so you can read out the the, the sources and and understand much more how it works for Falco. This one is for EKS, so this is just a demo. This this one is a work in progress idea like i uh, explained before is to offer uh, shared libraries shared modules to developers and this one is a POC to see how it works and if it will fit our needs so this is just a demo uh, poc uh, proof of concept so i just created two rules first one is uh, for success for success uh, actions and another one is for error, uh, error uh, actions in error. You can see the source is different because it's running as a POC, so this is why for now it's different. And we can extract like we had with the cur current implementation of audit logs internally to Falco, we have the same uh, fields. So let's see that. If I run the plugin, you can see we have a lot of events. I will just, I could, rock, I could write a, a rule with uh, and the uh, user.name, uh, user.name contains Thomas, uh, et cetera, but just to show you this one, let me get the list of pods in the default namespace. Just wait a few seconds. Here we go. We have my username, the target, the verb list, and the URI, which, which has been called, and the response to um, 200. So it worked. I can also describe a pod, for example, this one. We wait a few seconds. And we have gate, which pod, which target, which target it is. So we, we can see the user toma.labarisas uh, gets this pod and, he, um, and I received uh, 200 and, uh, er, uh, HTTP error code. It means I was able to retrieve data from this, for, for this pod. Right now I have some issues with the creation and deletions of pods. So I will not show you this right now, but you have an idea of what we could do in future with this kind of plugins. And the last one is more for fun. This is a Twitter plugin. So we are able to connect Falco to Twitter and retrieve 
uh, tweet in lifetime, in, a, in a real time, sorry. So in this example, uh, uh, just to, to be, uh, just you have to know uh, uh, the um, syntax uh, for is is uh, used for the plugin is quite uh, is a, quite the same than the uh, uh, Twitter stream API. So it doesn't work really well with rules because we have rules over rules. But this is just for a demo once once again, just to show you we have a new source and we can uh, get fun. Uh, informations in, in real time, like the old tweets, which refers to which refer to cats or dogs with an image. So we, we, we can have in real time if people prefer to share images of their cats or, or of their dogs. This is just a demo, for example. Here we go. As you can see, people prefer to share images, pictures of, of their cats because we have more new cat image. So we have the name, RT when it's an RT with a retweet, and we have so we have the content and the link to the image. It's just just an example, but. You can imagine with this kind of plug of plugin, we can also monitor in real time um, uh, major uh, tweets like hurricane alerts. Or I don't know. Or uh, for I don't know if, if you if you need to uh, make photograph photograph uh, to make picture of uh, of thunder or I don't know. You can in real time have to, uh, have some Slack or uh, WhatsApp or push bullet or I don't know alerts. Thanks to Falco about tweets which mention uh, uh, lightnings or, or else uh, in your country or in your region and be able to to run out with precautions to run out to take a picture. For example, we can imagine on a things like that. So. Like I mentioned, for the shared libraries and shared module, let me show you my face again. So we want to offer to people uh, shared modules for authentication, for service A, service B, etc., and make them uh, and allow them to create plugins based on this shared module. For example, for the uh, Kubernetes audit logs, we can have one. One module for authentication to Amazon, same for Google Platform, for another one for Azure. The, mod the module for connections to the, their log services and an extractor for the fields of the uh, Kubernetes audit logs, the JSON event. So we have three different plugins, three different source plugins, but they will share the same source. Uh, event source in four rules. This is a basic idea. If you want more fun with plugins, uh, this is, I just find it awesome. A guy from or a team from Sysdig created a plugin for pet surveillance. <laughs> the idea is to get the stream of events from a camera, a video camera, uh, run image reconnection with OpenCV over these images and create events sent to Falco with a plugin and be able to alert when you see a cat in your from the video stream. It means you can be alerted when your cat is destroying your living room when you are outside. I like this idea and if you want, uh, I think uh, a great idea too. Someone on the uh, Falco uh, community, uh, Falco uh, Slack channel mentioned, I don't remember his name, sorry, but mentioned he would like to create a plugin to connect his car, I think a Tesla, uh, his, tes his car with Falco through a plugin to be alerted of some events. For example, someone opened uh, a door or I don't know, uh, an issue with the, the car engine. 
Yes. I, I like the idea. So you can find out some useful, use, useful links, for example, the documentations about what are plugins, how they work. Um, the developer guide, really useful. You also have some details in the plugin registry. You can find out some dummy examples, some demo, etc. Um, don't hesitate to dig it, uh, to have, to dig in the repository to have more readmes and more info. We also have two useful blog posts. The first one is a plugin announcement. Uh, the reason behind what we we want to do with uh, what will be the future uh, with for plugins. And if you feel confident to write your for plug your first plugins, I also wrote a blog post. Uh, this is a, a getting started blog post about how to start with the Golem SDK to write your first plugin. It details. Uh, it details all all uh, functions and method I just show in my slides. Uh, open fields, next batch, and how they how you can use them, etc. Last word: uh, If you want to more details about Falco itself, of course you have falco.org, the main website. You can check out the project on GitHub and. Be you are all of you are, will be always welcome to discuss with the maintainers and the other members of the community in our uh, main uh, Slack channel, Falco on Kubernetes.slack.com. You can follow Falco on Twitter, and if you want to discuss about some interesting topics, we have a community call each Wednesday at 4 p.m. UTC. Just uh, come and discuss. We are more and more each week, and it warms a lot. Thank you, everybody. I uh, hope it has been clear for everybody, and welcome into the community. Merci.